I'm having my steamed crabs on Saturday. I'm taking JJ to the baseball game on Sunday and then I'm declaring it fall. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 61 of the Elo and Stitch podcast. I'm your host, Kristen, and I am here to talk to you about, what else? Knitting. Uh, and we'll probably be talking about all things knitting and yarn related and maybe not so knitting and yarn related as it comes up. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen. I'm a mostly retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, and an all-around knitting enthusiast. I am podcasting to you from my home in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. When I'm not knitting, you will find me uh, sewing, vegetable gardening, drinking wine, doing yoga, but it is mostly about the knitting. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. All right, so uh, it's been a while since I had done a podcast, um, probably about a month, maybe a month and a half. Uh, so I kind of took August off from the podcasting. I've still had some new videos up here on the channel, but taking a little break from podcasting to focus on creating some other kinds of videos, to actually focus on knitting, to enjoy the end of the summer. But now I am back and trying to get back into the swing of things. Um, but I'm excited to say that for this edition of On the Needles, Off the Needles, I have actually finished something. So I believe in the last podcast I had just finished this, or just started this, and it didn't really look like much. And I couldn't really show you much because it was a test knit, but now it is done. So this is my test knit of the Outline Raglan, which is a pattern now available from Jessie Mae Martinson of Jessie Mae Designs. So I tested this for her uh, over the summer, which is now hopefully rapidly coming to an end. And I finished it um, probably about three weeks ago and I love it. So this is a sport weight cotton pullover and like her other patterns, the outline tank and the outline tee, um, it creates, let's see if we can this up there, um, these eyelet kind of lines using dropped stitches. So what you do is uh, set up, and this is obviously um, worked in the round, it is worked top down, set up at the top to create, um, you can see that they kind of slant in and then down. And then once you get to the very end, you drop that stitch and let it unravel all the way back to the beginning, which is the fun part. Um, the nice thing about this is that it works really well for cotton yarns because cotton yarns aren't so sticky. So sometimes if you have um, a wool yarn, um, the fibers of the wool want to stick together and it's harder to unravel. Um, but this, it's a nice cotton yarn and they unraveled very easily. Uh, so this is the front. It is repeated on the back. Um, this was a really easy, really easy knit. Um, there are some short rows that create this um, just some moderate neckline shaping here so that the front dips down a little bit. You can see that these are um, just basically unfinished edges. Uh, you could certainly go around and pick up if you wanted to, maybe work around a crochet there if you wanted to, but I like them just as they are. Uh, it is the same for the sleeves and for the bottom hem. It is all just a stockinette and then bind off so you get a rolled hem. Um, so as I said, this was a really easy project, some nice mindless knitting. I don't generally enjoy working with cotton, but this is a really nice cotton yarn. So I decided to use uh, the yarn that she used for the sample. Um, and uh, we, were, we were offered a discount, so that was nice. This is Modus Operandi Fiber Company, I believe, but I will double check. Um, and this is her cotton sport yarn, and this is naturally dyed. So this colorway I want to say is called Rose Quartz. Uh, I don't remember what she uses to dye it. Um, my light is, it was supposed to be entirely sunny today, but we've got clouds rolling in, so my light's not great. Um, 
but this is just a very kind of dusty pink very um when I go for pinks, this is kind of the pink that I would go for. Uh, so I knit the size small and I will go ahead and pop a photo in here. Uh, so this is the size small 41 inch bust on a 36 inch bust. Um, I will say that the recommended ease is actually more than that. So had I done the suggested size, I would have gone up a size, but I didn't actually want um, my sweater to be that big and also uh the yarn is on the more expensive side and i wanted to be able to get my sweater out of the three skeins that i bought and i did however um i've got kind of let's see here like bracelet length sleeves uh, i had originally knit the sleeves nice and long uh, and then i realized i was not going to be able to get the second sleeve out so i ripped back so that I could fit everything into the three skeins. Uh, so I do have kind of bracelet length sleeves. If you wanted longer sleeves, you would definitely have to get another skein. Also, uh, as you saw in the photo, this is kind of right at the waistband for me. I wouldn't say it's cropped, but I'm also rather short waisted. So um, if you have a more sort of <laughs> standard torso length, it probably would be cropped on you. And it is not is definitely not long on me as it's right at the waistband but i did uh squeeze it out of three skeins which is 855 yards uh, so it can be done as long as you don't mind having slightly shorter sleeves and a not super long body uh, that's fine with me because to be honest i am almost always pushing my sleeves up and i prefer them kind of at this length so that is fine with me um I also, I can't, I, like, I cannot just have sleeves that are a normal length. They either have to be too long or they have to be shorter at any rate. Um, so this was a really easy knit. The unraveling of the, the stitch is always fun to see everything open up. This yarn, um, as far as cotton yarns go, really soft and easy to work with. Um, not, you know, a lot of cotton yarns will soften up after washing and blocking but are still really unpleasant to actually knit and that was not the case with this so it was it was very comfortable to work with and it's it's very soft um, so i have worn this a handful of times not a whole lot because uh it is still summer here today is august 31st um, we are occasionally now getting some cooler days mixed in so right now it's only about 80 degrees and that is lovely, but we are still getting the majority of our days upper 80s to mid 90s. So the weather is really not quite, even though it's cotton, it's not quite right for this yet, but we've had a few cooler days and evenings where I've had a chance to wear this and it has been very comfortable and lovely. Uh, and I'm very happy with it. So if you are in the market for, I'm sure you could do this with uh, with a wool yarn but it really does work nicely with cotton so if you are in the market for like a light pullover very comfortable almost like a sweatshirt this is a great choice for you so i actually finished something mostly because i had that deadline to work on what else the other thing to getting most of my attention <laughs> has been this thing that is it's really, it's almost done now, but, um, it has been a little slow. The needles are, yeah, a US four. So not going super fast, but I am almost, almost, almost done my, oops, almost done my gelato tank top. So right now I want to do, I mean, it's not going to, it's not going to be that high up. It is a tank top. So it's probably going to be like right here. And that's right about at the waist. So what I'm planning to do right now is one more uh, of the increase rounds. This is an A-line shape and I want it to be nice and wide at the hips. Um, the instructions are for a garter stitch edging at the hips. I actually am not gonna do that. I'm just going to bind off. Uh, I may actually go up a needle size to bind off and just leave this as a rolled hem. 
Um, I think that garter stitch is just gonna give it more structure than I want it to have. It is nice and floaty and airy. I am using this uh, Magpie Fibers Equinox Sport, which is a, um, I wanna say a linen silk. So then the last thing I have to do is just do the straps at the top, um, which I'm slightly concerned about because it's so hard to get them to exactly the right length so that you end up with, you know, a top that's not <laughs> too revealing, but it's not like way up here either. Um, so that part I always find tricky, but it is just about the last thing to do. And then go in and finish fixing all my baubles. So if you um, caught the last episode of the podcast, I did find... Um, the method for fixing the baubles on the uh, Wool Needles Hands Fiber for the People YouTube channel, uh, where she has a whole video about it. Um, but I just haven't taken the time to do it. I did a few test ones, which I don't know if you can see. So I did a few test ones here and it does work, but I thought it would be smarter to wait until after I have washed and blocked. So. Uh, that is going to be the very last thing I do, but I'm just about done this. This is not, it hasn't been a bad project, but as you can see, once you get done sort of this, this center bit, it's just a lot of stockinette in the round. Um, and this is a really nice yarn. Like I said, it's a, it's a linen silk. It's very soft to work with, but I'm also working on pretty small needles, uh, a US four. Um, but my hope is <laughs> I am going to and get this done this week and then uh, we'll be able to wear it at least once. <laughs> to be honest, I'm sure I will get to wear it uh, a few more times because uh, these days it does not get cold around here until late October, if that. Um, but we shall see. Of course, I would like it to get colder sooner, but oddly enough, that's not something I'm in control of. Um, Maybe I could get it done to wear this weekend. This weekend is Labor Day weekend. And I've already told my, my husband and my sister, I'm having my steam crabs on Saturday. I'm taking JJ to the baseball game on Sunday and then I'm declaring it fall. I have had it with summer. I'm tired of being hot. I'm tired of mosquitoes. I'm tired of being sweaty. I'm just over it. So <laughs> I'm gonna do these last two summery things uh, and maybe I could have this done in time for that. We'll see. Um, Actually, you can see, as I was saying, this is like when I go for pinks, this is the pink and it's almost identical, a sort of dusty pink. It's one of the beaver colors. I can never keep them straight. Um, so it's a little late to be finishing this up, but I think we still have a few, uh, unfortunately, a few hot and sweaty weeks ahead of us. So I will, sh I should get some, some use out of this and can probably layer it uh, when the fall comes as well. So in terms of personal projects, that has been getting most of my attention, um, or at least after I finished that test net. I have cast on a project that I am pretty sure is a mistake. Um, so as part of my, one of the patterns on my Make 9 for 2022 is the Kinnikin cardigan. Um, I will go ahead and just, ta-da! So that's the sample photo of it. Um, and I got the yarn for this for Mother's Day. And um, with fall coming, I decided to cast on. I want to show you the needle for this project. This is not a needle. This is something you use to stab a vampire. So this is a US 19 15 millimeter needle. So here's the progress I've made so far. Um, so you have your yarn held double for the, for the collar so that it stands up. And then you switch to, this is with a bulky yarn. And then you switch to just um, a single strand and the US 19 needle. Now in the original picture, it is a little loose. This seems a little too loose. But the thing is, I don't have a whole lot of like needle sizes, so I can't just like go down a needle size. I don't have down a needle size from 19. 
Um, so it calls for bulky weight yarn and I have what is supposed to be a bulky weight yarn and it's definitely not a worsted or an Aran, so I guess technically it is bulky, but it just seems a little thin. All right, so this yarn is um, Amano Uyu, uh, which is 70% baby alpaca, 30% silk. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess it's definitely a bulky weight. It's 50 grams, uh, 82 yards to 50 grams. And the recommended needle size is a US 13. This doesn't look quite substantial enough for this. And the yarn is so soft. It's beautiful. It is gonna pill so badly. I, I just, there's no way it's not going to. So it's like, <laughs> I love it. I love the, the cardigan, the sample. I want it to be this like, cozy, throw on, warm for the entire winter. You know, I got it in this colorway, which I believe is called fog, which is, it kind of goes with everything. But it's like, I know <laughs> that this sweater is not going to last. It is going to pill. It is going to wear out because the, the gauge is so loose. <sighs> so I don't, it just seems like a bad idea to keep going with a sweater that is just going to be a mistake. I just, just spend so much time knitting something I'm 100% sure is going to fall apart. I mean, I couldn't even, <laughs> I did not even have stitch markers, obviously, big enough for this US 9. So I had to take some fabric scraps to make myself stitch markers. It is so soft, though. And, um... Part of the problem is with a needle this big, it's almost impossible to to maintain any kind of, of even tension while you're knitting. It's The knitting rows aren't so bad. The purling rows are just atrocious. So I don't know. I mean, I want to keep going because this is, let's see, since the collar, I have worked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows, and that's like three inches deep for just nine rows. So, I mean, it's, it should be a relatively quick project. I just, it just feels like a mistake. <laughs> I just, I don't know, to put so much effort into something I'm sure is not going to last, you know, it's, it's not the smartest choice, but it really, it's so soft. So we'll see. I did start it because I had one of those, ah, fall's coming. I have to start a new sweater, but you know, I had the yarn for it. I had it wet, already had it wound. Um, but, uh, this is, this is not going to end well that I know. And that is, I think what I have for on and off the needles, uh, in this episode. Adelante. I'm going to tell you about some upcoming design work. Um, I wish I could say I was making more progress on this, but I just haven't been. Um, this is the cardigan version of my Soundside pullover. Um, but I've just been... <laughs> so uh, frustrated with how much is getting lost in in the yarn and is just not coming through. So this is a, um, a twisted garter rib here. I'm just, you're barely seeing it. Um, and it's, again, it's a, a supposed lace weight, close to your fingering weight held with another lace weight on a uh, US 5, so it's not going super fast. Um, I'm just I'm very unsure about whether to continue, because uh, I'm just, it is just the, the stitch pattern is just not popping the way that I would like it to. And it's, you know, it's okay to have kind of a subtle stitch pattern, so maybe I should continue with that. I just, I don't know. It's almost like, why am I bothering to create a stitch pattern when you can barely see it? But then on the other hand, it's, 
it's a, I mean, you can, you can definitely see it. I don't know about it on the camera. You can definitely see it in person, but it's not, it's more like, oh, there's something there, but I can't quite tell what it is. So I've been kind of disenchanted with that project. Uh, but I have gotten a little bit of progress on another one. So in case you have missed it, I have recently started a new series here on the YouTube channel called Sweater Workshop, where I am teaching viewers how to knit a sweater, uh, kind of step by step. And I am starting with a saddle shoulder for two reasons. Um, one, because there were already a lot of how to knit a raglan sweater, how to knit a circular yoke sweater videos out there and not so much on the raglan. Uh, and two, because I am working on a raglan sweater design and thought that would be you know, kind of the most convenient option to work on the design uh, and make the videos at the same time. Um, so I will go ahead and put the link in case you want to check that out. And now I will show you the progress I have made, which is that I have knit the saddles and done the shaping for each back shoulder. So this is a project I am doing with uh, yarn support from Hudson and West. This is going to be a cabled cardigan. I'm sure I have shown you the sketch and the swatch before. Um, this part is the trickiest part. So you have to, I mean, the saddles themselves are easy, but then you have to um, pick up your stitches do the shaping to drop, you know, the, the shoulder kind of down while incorporating your stitch pattern. And then you have to get the stitch pattern from one shoulder, the stitch pattern from the other shoulder to meet together correctly in the kind of the center back. Um, so this part, and then again, repeating the same process for the front, this is the trickiest part. So this is the part that is gonna take the longest once those stitch patterns have been established and set up and it can start moving, it will start going a lot faster. Although I am doing the video so that we'll slow it down a little bit. You can see I've still got live stitches on one side. So because I'm doing that um, seamless set in sleeve, it's just gonna make it easier to come in and already have live stitches there instead of having to pick them up. Um, I don't have much to say about this because I haven't made that much progress so far, as you can see. I'm still excited about it. Um, there's a lot of nice elements in this project that I really like. I like the cables. It's going to have pockets. I like the um, I like the seamless set in sleeve. I think it's a nice fit. I like saddle shoulders because as opposed to having either nothing in the upper body to sort of no seams or anything to kind of hold the stress of the sweater or having a single seam in the, in the middle of your shoulder, you actually have two spots where you're picking up stitches, which is kind of helping the stress of holding the weight of the sweater spread out a little bit more evenly. So I personally really like saddle shoulder designs. Um, I do have two sweaters and a saddle shoulder t-shirt uh, in my portfolio already, but I'm really looking forward to this. I love working with this yarn. This is actually one of my favorite sweater yarns. Um, it is quite soft. It's not as soft as a superwash merino. It is a, uh, I want to say merino Corydale blend. Yeah, it's a merino Corydale, but it's not superwash merino. Um, it is plied. It is not su like a super tight ply. Um, but it is still has enough of that stitch definition for your cables, but it's soft. It just has a little bit of extra like toothiness to it. Really the Hudson West Forge is one of my favorite sweater yarns. Um, one of my upcoming videos I hope is going to be about my favorite sweater yarns and this, this is definitely one of them. So I am really enjoying working on the project. One of the things that was slowing me down was again, I'm doing the videos and my setup for doing the overhead recording um, wasn't great, but I got a new doohickey to do the overhead recording that I think is working. I've only used it once, but I think it's working much better and I think it's gonna help speed things up. Um, the other problem was having my kids at home for the summer because uh, they're just around. They're not, they're not great, especially the little one, not great at entertaining themselves. 
but now with them back in school, I think things are going to start moving a little more swiftly. Uh, I recently finished the, um, I think second to last round of edits on a pattern I am working on with a third party publisher that is going to be coming out, um, early 2023. So I think the next, it goes through the tech editor, then I get one more shot at it. And I think I am basically done, <laughs> um, until proofs go to the printer, uh, in a few months. And that I think for now is all of the design stuff that I have been working on in my retirement. All right. I had, um, I actually haven't been buying a lot of yarn or fabric or really much of anything recently. Um, because my sister and I threw this big 75th birthday party for my dad. And I will tell you guys more about that in Chatterbox, but um, I don't have any money, but I did do a little bit of shopping recently uh, that I wanted to show you guys. So I learned about this company from Taylor Owen, who does the um, Soda Mend, is it Soda Mend? Spin to Mend? So to Mend podcast. I'll just do a link, you'll know. Um, podcast here on YouTube. Taylor lives in Baltimore. I was born and raised in Baltimore. I no longer live there. I live um, closer to DC now to accommodate uh, my husband commuting to his job, which is horrible enough as it is from here. Thread to Mend. There we go. Thread to Mend podcast. Um, so I'm not up on the latest businesses uh, in Baltimore. So I was excited to learn about this place from her. So this company is called 22 Grant Street Candle Company. Can you focus please? There we go. Uh, and she was singing the praises of their candles and I am a big, big scented candle person. I don't wanna hear about how bad scented candles are for you. I don't care. Um, I really just don't. I like my scented candles and, uh, you know, we're all entitled to some vices. So, um, she had been talking about the candles. So I signed up for their newsletter and then I got an email about their, um, clearance for their, I guess their, um, whatever these, what is it? These kind of black tumblers, I guess. I don't know, I guess they're, they're not using these black tumblers anymore, whatever the case may be. Um, so I decided to do some shopping. So I got two candles. This one is called Tonka and what I assume is pronounced Oud. Oud? I don't know. I don't even know what those are. <laughs> oak moss and amber this one i have not even burned yet that smells so good this one the oak moss one is a little as you might imagine a little <sighs> smells a little more like vegetation you can definitely but it smells like plants like foliage um again i don't know what tonka and oud are this one um, just smells a little spicier. So this one is more of a, a fall kind of scent, I would say, but I love it. It smells so good. Um, so again, this is a Baltimore based artisan cam candle company. It is a black owned business. Uh, they have, and I want to go to candle making workshops. So Claire, if you're watching, the next time they have one, we're going to go. They serve like drinks in there. Anyway, um, but if you are a scented candle fan like I am, definitely check them out. They have really unique fragrances that I haven't seen anywhere else. Like I like a really good pumpkin spice candle. Love the Bath Mighty Works candles. <laughs> but if you're looking for maybe some unique combinations, some scents uh, that you haven't seen before, definitely check them out. So again, it is called... 22 Grant Street Candle Company. They are based in Baltimore um, and they have really pretty, really good smelling candles. So check them out.
right, I'm not going to do a really deep dive on sewing in this episode just because I've been doing a lot of sewing. I've lost track of what I showed you guys. Um, most of it is probably in the laundry waiting to be washed anyway, but I will show you the sewing project that I am currently working on. So <laughs> earlier this year, I saw this fabric and it's not really my typical kind of fabric. It's really kind of preppy and um, I don't know, just not my typical style, but it's also pink flamingos which um, if you're from Baltimore, you're kind of obligated to <laughs> appreciate. So I went ahead and bought it and it is a, a, a pink seersucker with flamingos and then I just wasn't sure what to do with it. Um, and as the end of summer has been approaching, I wanted to do one more kind of summer sewing project before I started on some fall stuff. So, I knew I wanted to use the pink flamingos. Um, I wasn't sure with what. I only bought two yards, so uh, not really enough for a dress. Um, and again, it's pink flamingos, so it's not, I don't necessarily want it on like a whole dress anyway. So when I finally set it on, it was a pair of shorts. And I had originally cut out the pattern pieces for one pair of shorts. Um, but then after I cut them out, I thought, I think these, this fabric is not going to work for this. This is a more kind of structured pair of shorts that needs a little bit of a heavier fabric. So again, this is a seersucker, so it's, it's pretty thin. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of structure to it. So then I remembered that um, I had a lot of success with the Petra pants back at the beginning, no, in December, it was for Christmas that I made them, or prior to Christmas. Uh, and the, the pattern actually includes wide leg pants, um, narrow leg pants, and shorts. So I was like, I will try those shorts. So that is what I am working on right now. So you can see, I hope it's focusing on these adorable pink flamingos all over this stripy seersucker fabric, which you're right is see-through. <laughs> I'm so good at picking fabric. Um, so this is the front of the shorts. They have pockets. Um, I have, I've sewn the back, sort of the back piece together, but I have not done the back waistband yet. Um, I'm hoping to finish these up pretty quickly. Um, so basically I'm going to do the back waistband and then just sew the fronts and backs together uh, and hem the legs. So my experience with the Petra pants was that uh, the size was more or less correct, maybe a little loose, but not enough to go down another size. However, the rise was too long for me. Um, so as I was cutting this out, I looked at the front pieces and I said, oh, I should, I should shorten the, the rise. And it has a spot right there to shorten it. Okay, so I did that. And I'm happily, you know, moving along, cutting along, and I realized that because of the way <laughs> these are constructed, it's not just one piece that I have to fix. It's not even two. I have to fix the front side piece, the front center piece, the back piece, and the pockets to take an inch out of all of them <laughs> so that the rise is correct. So that is what I went back and did. And um, it worked okay, I think. I haven't finally, you know, I haven't finished putting them together yet, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think it worked out correctly. Um, although looking at it now, I'm not 100%, but the back doesn't have the waistband yet, so I'm not sure. Um, so I think I did it correctly, just to shorten the rise so that they wouldn't look droopy in the crotch which is not attractive on anyone. Uh, so I am, as I said, hopeful to get these finished up. I wanted to have one last summer sewing project and I really like the Petra pants. I like the, uh, other than the, the rise being too long for me, I like the fit, I like the style of the pockets. They're really comfortable. I like the waistband. Um, so I'm really hoping this is gonna work out and just be 
the most adorable pair of end of summer pink flamingo preppy shorts, which are not really my style, but pink flamingos. Uh, and then when that is done, it is time for fall stuff. So I am doing, uh, again, seam work, which um, I think bought out Colette Patterns and has their own patterns and has sort of a kind of a Ravelry-ish feel to it, but for sewing. Um, they, twice a year, I think, maybe it's only once a year, but I think it's twice a year, has their uh, designer wardrobe um, class workshop, say workshop, for free for their members. And it's like nine dollars a month to join and includes a pattern credit every month. So I'm doing that again. Um, and I think this is the first time I'm doing it along with, like you can do it as an independent kind of study at any time. But I think this is the first time I'm doing it along with the other members of the community. Um, and it's just to help you plan out your upcoming fall, winter, and then I guess spring, summer wardrobe so that you can kind of, rather than just sew things on a whim, kind of plan things out so that they work together and are kind of cohesive. They can mix and match. And they're also that, you know, keeping in mind that they're actually things you're going to wear. So I want to show you guys my mood board for this because I'm actually really happy with it. I, uh, it's so hard for me to tell if it's focusing, but it looks like it is. So this is my mood board for fall, winter. So you can see I have a few projects, like here's the Kinnikin card again. Um, a few projects on here that are definitely projects I wanna do. I also have the, um, the what's it called? Great Gingham Raglan, which is the Jessie Mae pattern. I have the swatch for my own uh, cardigan. Uh, and then I just have kind of, you know, some, not necessarily, this one definitely is a project I am making, but the rest of it is not necessarily projects I'm definitely going to make, which is kind of like the style, the inspiration for what I want my wardrobe to look like for fall and winter. Um, so I'm really happy with it. It is so fallish and cozy, but also just not too, not too hermit-ish, you know, after so many years of COVID, I'm not like a super social person, but I am also kind of tired of being at home all the time. So I'm uh, hoping to get out at least a little bit more uh, and have some more appropriate clothes for leaving the house rather than um, laying around in leggings and cozy sweaters the entire fall and winter. Definitely the winter. I mean, January through March, they're the worst. I don't want to go anywhere or do anything. So that's out. But... <laughs> Uh, October through December, I would like to have some good clothes for that. So I'm really uh, excited about my mood board and I'm starting to plan some more specific um, knitting and sewing projects for the fall. Um, so I already have, I think I showed you guys the fabric I have for this dress. Um, these two sets of pants I am probably going to, to make uh, and maybe this skirt as well. So we'll see. I don't have like a, a queue of projects yet, but I am working on it and I am really looking forward to fall sewing and also fall sewing that kind of mixes and matches nicely with my fall knitting. Okay, Chatterbox, it has been a while, as I've said, since I did a podcast. Um, wanted to take a little break. But now I am back, and I guess um, pretty much all of August I was um, off the grid or off the podcast grid. Is that a thing? I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we went to the beach. We had two weeks on the beach, um, which there were definitely pros and cons. Uh, it was really nice not to feel like we were trying to cram everything into one week. But in order to manage two weeks at the beach, uh, the house was uh, quite a bit smaller than what we usually get. Definitely by the end of the week, we were just, everybody was getting on everybody's nerves. Um, it was very hot when we were at the beach. It was... 
we didn't have a, a super long walk to the beach and also my kids don't like the actual beach that much <laughs> but uh, they like having a beach house with a pool so <laughs> they were very happy with that part uh, but it was I guess it was in the 90s all week and it's uh, the sun is very strong very humid um, but we still had a nice time I at some point was pretty tan but it's, we got back on like the seventh or eighth I guess so it's been almost a month <laughs> um, and it has faded much too quickly um, and then when we got back we were had what three weeks left to summer vacation um, so my dad turned 75 this year and he also retired this year so my sister and I really wanted to do a nice party for him he's never really had a nice anybody do a nice party for him um, and especially after I mean, he retired and with the exception of a couple of years he worked for the Archdiocese of Baltimore for like 45 years and he got a plaque and you get a party or a dinner or anything and it's just really disappointing um so we really want to do something nice for him uh and so we had a party for him at a local vineyard um and it was it was nice uh it was that we didn't have as many people as we hoped um and about 20 people didn't show up who said they were going to show up which is really annoying because as you can imagine if you're hosting something at a vineyard you have to pay up front per person for your alcohol and so that was just money down the drain um but it was nice he got to see some old friends um, some family do that doesn't get together a lot. Um, some, you know, the kids got to see some, some sort of like, I guess they're second or third cousins and some friends. So we had a nice time and it was a nice day. Um, but now I'm poor and we don't have any money. <laughs> no. That's an exaggeration, but, uh, it was, it was a little pricey. So now we're, uh, we're in sort of recovery mode from that. Um, which is one of the reasons we will, I will not be going to write back this year. Um, it's uh, it just is a pricey weekend um, between, between renting a place to stay and having to go out and eat all your meals because you don't have a kitchen to cook. And of course buying yarn, uh, it just adds up and we're just not gonna be able to swing it this year. Uh, just a real bummer. I may, drive down to the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival, which is in late September. I want to say it's the 24th and 25th. I might drive down there. That's just a couple of hours and I can go by myself. So um, that is a possibility, but I am a little sad about missing right back again. The other thing I was thinking about uh, is possibly going to Vogue Knitting Live in February, depending on what's going on with COVID and things, um, you know, they, they've been, a lot of places have scheduled live events and then as they approached, realized that it wasn't safe to do it and then had canceled. So obviously I don't know what's gonna be happening with that. Um, but I may end up doing that because again, that's something I can do kind of by myself. Um, and I like Vogue Knitting Live because it has a lot of classes in a lot of different areas. Um, so we'll see about that. Other than that, we finally got the kids back to school. They are both riding the bus this year. The little one is so excited about the bus. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. Public transportation is a marvel to him. So uh, because he is in special education classes, the bus comes right to our house, right up to our, to our driveway. So um, just right from our driveway, we can put him on the bus and he's safe and they drop him off at the end of the day. And he is so happy. Even the first day, you know, he didn't really get upset. Um, I got upset, but he didn't get upset. Um, the older one, of course, we had to walk up to his bus stop. It is not very far at all, um, so that's fine. 
he is less enthusiastic about the bus, but I am very happy not to, um, the big problem is my kids go to two different schools. And so just the, the whole process of morning drop off and afternoon pickup takes a long time. Um, so now in the morning, it's still, there's quite a bit of difference in the pickup times, but I'm not driving. So I, you know, walk the little one out to the driveway at, at 8, 10 AM. And then, you know, we wait like 50 minutes and then we walk the other one up to the bus stop. Um, so the kids are back in school and my husband is now going to the office one day a week. That day is Tuesday. So Tuesday is my new favorite day of the week because everybody is gone and the house is quiet. Yesterday, I just sat in the house. My husband's like, is that all you're going to do? You're just going to sit? I'm like, yeah, today I'm just going to sit. I'm just going to enjoy how quiet it is in this house. Nobody's talking to me. Nobody's asking me for things. I'm not, I'm not listening to somebody talk on the phone or I'm just, I'm just, it's so quiet. And I could just do things when I wanted to. I could just, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to do my yoga now. And I would just do my yoga or, okay, it's time to eat lunch, even though it's like in a weird time. <laughs> so new favorite day, Tuesdays. I get peace and quiet for about seven hours. Delightful. I uh, highly recommend. Um, other than that, not a lot going on here. I did a lot of back to like pre back to school activities with the kids. We went to the zoo. We went to the county fair. We went and did the paddle boats on the the local outdoor mall. So kind of crammed that all in at the end <laughs> because we had sort of late June, early July was when we all got COVID. And then we went to the beach and then we just had a few weeks left to get everything, uh, everything in that we wanted to do. Um, but I think, I think we did a, I don't know if my kids would agree, but I think we did an okay job getting lots of fun activities in. I don't think they missed out on much. We have some friends that, um, used to live just, uh, a couple of blocks away and recently moved, which was a bummer, but they moved to a house of the pool. <laughs> so we went over there one day and the kids got to do swimming, you know, and it's, it's not like we, we have a community pool, but there's all kinds of rules. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the rules are there for a reason, but you know, they get mad if you splash too much or, and this, they could, we had an eye on them and as long as nobody was in physical danger, we were fine. And, and they had a lot of fun and, you know, it's like the only kids there are kids that are your friends. So it's, it's much more comfortable for them. So I think we fit in all our summer fun and I am ready for the fall. I always am. Uh, but it has been just uh, every year. I'm like, I'm going to enjoy summer this year. But then it turns out that summer is actually not that enjoyable. It's really hot. I'm a very sweaty person. So I sweat a lot and there are a lot of mosquitoes and other assorted bugs. So it's, it's not that fun. I know. I mean, there are fun things to do, but overall as an adult, summer's not that great. I still have to work. I still got to take care of my kids. <laughs> you know, we go to the beach, but I still got to like do laundry and make dinner and hand out punishments. <laughs> so at least when it's fall, I can do all of those things while wearing comfortable sweaters and not being hot and gross. That's just, that's just my take on it. But, uh, I think summer is too hyped up. Um, assuming that you are an adult with a job and kids, maybe it's, maybe it's better if you don't have one or the other of those things. So I am ready for fall. I am ready for cooler weather and I am ready for sweaters. I don't know about you. Let's hope the cooler weather gets here soon. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 61 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Show notes with links to everything that I have talked about can be found at mediaperuana.com slash ELO and Stitch. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons who support the podcast and help keep the Media Peruana Knits channel up and running. 
If you are interested in some perks and freebies and behind the scenes goodies and want to learn more about that, you can visit patreon.com slash media peruana. Here on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, share with your friends, all of those things that will help expand the reach of the channel and are greatly appreciated. If you're looking for me on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Media Peruana, and I will see you next time. Thank you.